Okay, let's make some keycaps. Got the setup right here, and everything is nice and clean. And all we're going to be doing with this one here is making purple blanks, and they're going to be uh, somewhat transparent with that, so I'm going to be using the Smoothcast 325 for that. Now, I would highly recommend, if you want something that's crystal clear, and you don't want any colors or anything else added to it, use Illuminite. It takes a little bit longer for it to cure, but it's a lot more UV resistant. But in this case here, because of the coloring, uh, then I'm totally fine with the 325. Plus it cures a lot faster, so we can show you the next part of this video as well. So we have this set up here. So you can see in my workspace, what I like to do is uh, reuse the part A cup, if I'm going to be using that uh, throughout one day. At the end of the day, toss them. And then the same thing with the measuring pipettes, uh, in this case here, um, I have them marked at three milliliters each. So then that way I can measure them out easily. So you can do one or two of those and you know that's going to be plenty for the caps. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put one in the pressure pot and one without. So with that, I'm going to be charging the air compressor right now. So while that's loading up, we can go back and talk about this is the workspace here. So we've got some ventilation coming in here. Now, ideally, you have on a respirator mask like this right here. You should be, have some kind of protection with these because the resins are toxic. And so you don't want that stuff building up in your lungs. Now, uh, in this case here, you wouldn't be able to hear much of what I was saying with the respirator on. So I have a fan that's blowing right towards here. So that's going to be blowing everything away. And it's a wide open garage, so I'm a little bit less concerned about that. But this is the first time in about two years that I've been without a mask as well. So as long as you're extremely cautious about it, then you should be OK. okay. So with that in mind, we're going to dive right into it. There we go. Uh, that's ready to go. So I'm going to uh, pour the part B in the one side. Uh, I usually use these cups right here that are not marked. And I'm just going to measure out that amount. So in this case, I'm going to do two three milliliter shots in here. So I'm doing the first one and I'm going against the side to let those bubbles pop a little bit. Okay, like that, I'm squeezing and then grabbing the second one, doing the exact same thing. And the idea is to introduce as few bubbles as possible into here. Okay, and then so it's going down the side as well. Because if you just go right into the center and just spray it, then it, you'll make a whole lot more bubbles in there and a higher likelihood that there's going to be an issue with your final cast. In this case here, because this is clear, uh, a little bit of dye goes a long way. So in this case, I'm using the So Strong. Uh, this is purple, so I'm going to use just a tiny little bit of purple. And I'm going to show you, it's just the very end right there of that. And I'm only going to mix it in just for a second. And that's it. Okay. And then we can see in there, that there's only just a tiny little bit. And I like to use these crystal stir sticks because one of these is something that would last you for years. All right, so let's say this is your first time using one with something like that. You can stir it up a little bit just to see what it looks like. You can see with just that little bit, that's a pretty deep, rich purple just from that tiny little dot in there. So you really don't need a lot there. Now, if you were to use something like 300, then uh, Smoothcast 300 that turns white, then you would need more. Okay. Uh, so I'm mixing that up just a little bit. I'm going to mix up the rest once it goes in on the other side, too. So we have that done. And so your part B is colored. And now you'd open up this container for the part A. And then so we'll do that now. I like to keep the lid upside down so you never bring new contaminants in there. Notice that this is always a clean area, too. so. You don't want to contaminate whatever is in here. Okay, so now I'm going to use the other marked A5 because I know this is for 325. Whatever marking system you use is fine, just as long as you're consistent with it. All right, and I'm doing the exact same thing, and I'm pouring against the side a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. And that's it. There's still going to be some bubbles in there, but we'll let it rest for a second to let those pop. You can already see that some of them are starting to pop. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out here is this is marketed as clear, but it comes with a slightly yellow twinge to it. Uh, I'm not sure how much that's going to show up on the camera, but you can see that it's slightly amber. They are more UV reactant, so uh, when they're hit with sunlight, they will yellow a little bit more. So keep that in mind if you're going with crystal clear. But in this case here, We've got both of the parts, and this is ready to go, so I can pour the one into the other. 
which is what I'm going to do here with both of these, keeping one inside the pressure pot and one without. So then you can see what happens and how all the bubbles start to form in there and what the pressure pot can do for it. So here we go, I'm going to stir that in. And as soon as this goes in, we're on the clock. I stir for anywhere from 25 to 30 seconds with it, uh, anything more, and you run the risk of having that cure a little bit beforehand, which is not good. So here we go. We have about 25 seconds left. Rotating like this and trying to get into the middle and everywhere in there. And I'm keeping my stir stick touching the very bottom the whole time as to not introduce any more bubbles than I have to in here. And so it starts to heat up a little bit. I know it's just about there. Okay, and so I have a little area off to the side where I'll put the little drops that are going to fall in there. And now we can just pour just a little bit straight in there like that. I like to pour up to the, about that line or a little bit less because everything is going to start oozing out the sides and the top after. Okay, so we have the two there. So now you can take that. I'm lining up the curves, the curves right there. And very gently, letting gravity do a lot of the work. And then you can push down slightly. And I like to do a little wiggle twist to the side and side. So we'll do the same thing with that one. We'll put this, uh, we call it the, the butt mold part of it. So we'll put that in there and do the same thing. Do a little butt wiggle. Okay, and that's it. So uh, they're nice and snug in there. I'm taking this one because we are still on the clock. And putting it into the pressure pot, like so. And I'm gonna latch these up. I like spinning them two at the same time to save time. Okay. Everything is nice and tight in there. You don't have to like really, really tighten it too hard. Just hard enough that it's nice and secure. And then next you connect to this part. And make sure everything's sealed. Most with that, what I did is I disconnected this and then disconnect here and it's done. So now uh, we're going to let this cure. I'll show you what it looks like once that's done.